I can't think of a recount we've had or even in Iowa that uh, changed uh, a lot of votes. Eric Van uh, but Lanker again, has when it's overseen close, several recounts you know, in his 16 years as Clinton County Auditor. He says the process is as simple as it sounds, recounting ballots cast on Election Day. There's a, a misconception that during a recount that um, the recount board can go back and look at ballots that were rejected for whatever reason, including maybe even provisional ballots. But any provisional ballots, again, that weren't counted, any absentee ballots that were rejected, that's not part of this recount process. Any differences might come during a hand count where the board can determine voter intent. This is just an example of what we've seen. We've seen where maybe they shaded in the bubble for one candidate and then kind of clearly crossed that out and tried to vote for the other candidate, maybe even circled, you know, the name of that candidate to try to make it appear they really meant to do that. KCRG TV9 political analyst Megan Goldberg says recounts are becoming quite common in Iowa's first congressional district, where Miller Meeks won her first term by only six votes in 2020. Cost of them are covered by the state if the margin is is quite small. Um, so it has to be, I think, 1% of the overall votes cast. Um, and so especially when we're talking about, if, if we're thinking about lots of races, that's like a very, very small number. And often races aren't that close. The 802 vote difference is within that 1%. But Goldberg and Lanker agree it's unlikely a recount will change much. We've done this congressional district before. Um, that is going to be, uh, honestly, a lot of votes to, to find and, and, and overcome in, in the recount process.